All right, everyone. Good evening. Appreciate you joining us tonight uh, for our PKBGT webinar on uh, maximizing rankings and exposure uh, for your daughter. Uh, hopefully I can share some of our experiences we've learned uh, throughout the years doing uh, tournament golfs for the girls uh, through the PKB and otherwise and um, give you some more knowledge that you can use when making those decisions as far as uh, which tournaments to play and um, when should we move up, all those things that kind of come and we get asked a lot. So uh, we wanted to put this webinar together uh, to kind of give you some more information to help you be uh, more educated when you're making those decisions. Um, definitely want to first want to say thank you to my staff for that wonderful picture on the uh, uh, header there. Appreciate that wonderful photo they found uh, to put on there. So thanks, guys. Um, so first, a little bit about me. Um, just uh, I'm Mike Parker, the tour director here with Peggy Kirk Bell Girls Golf. Um, Co-founded the tour with Robert Limville back in 2007. Uh, I actually was a high school golfer, but grew up in a baseball family. So I played collegiate baseball and uh, always around baseball my whole life, but I had a connection to golf. And uh, when I got out of school, I actually got uh, into the golf industry, uh, working uh, uh, for Robert with the, the golf school in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, so I've been in the industry now for about 18 years and have been in tournament golf um, most of the time. So um, now, uh, you know, with the, the girls' golf course starting in 2007, uh, we've been uh, really focusing on that. Uh, but prior to my time with PKB, I uh, spent some time with U.S. Kids Golf running a, a local tour as well as being a site director at the World Championships um, back in Williamsburg before it moved to Pinehurst. Uh, run the Precision Junior Championships. So we had about 180 players at its peak uh, with uh, that and uh, something called the J.P. Looney's Parent Child Tour back in the 2000s, which was really interesting. Uh, have so much empathy for you parents watching your children play and uh, so helpless there on the sidelines. And that Parent Child Tour was a complete different experience when uh, you're playing together um, and uh, all the comments from the kids at the end of the round about how dad can't putt. And uh, that was what's holding their team back. So uh, that was always an interesting dynamic, but um, have enjoyed those, uh, those different experiences now leading to working with the girls. Um, and a little bit about the tour. Uh, again, we found it in 2007. Uh, it's part of the, the Triad Youth Golf Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit foundation. Um, and our mission has stayed the same uh, throughout uh, the, the whole um, course of the, since it was a, an idea, which was we wanted to give girls more opportunities, get them more quality on course experiences and, and availability to play. Uh, so for us, it was always about increasing participation and interest and uh, providing that a venue for, for players with collegiate aspirations, um, a place to play and be recognized um, and to, to keep it affordable for, for top level competition and development. Uh, so that's always been our goal. Uh, so tonight, uh, here are some different uh, pieces that I'm going to try to cover. Um, if you have questions uh, throughout the webinar, do not feel like you need to wait to the end. Please uh, use the chat function uh, in the webinar to be able to, to ask questions pertaining to any slide that I'm at. Um, be happy to answer those as we go. Um, so, um, And if somebody would give me a quick chat just to make sure that uh, we know everybody is connected. That would be helpful to me. Um, there we go. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, the things we're going to cover tonight, uh, first I'm going to start out with what are the ranking systems that are out there, uh, how they calculate your daughter's ranking within their systems. Uh, try to answer a couple questions about do rankings matter, um, and that's going to matter about where your daughter is in her process as far as the developmental process. Um, all right, glad to see everybody's here. Welcome. Um, then we'll get into kind of the PKB's pathway progression and uh, the why, the why we are structured the way we are and the, the, the pathway that that presents for your daughter to take her from wherever she starts all the way to playing collegiate golf. Because our mindset is our platform is there for players that want to play collegiate golf. Now, some may choose at some point that that's not their end game. That's not what they ultimately want to do. And that's that's fine, but the, the structure and why we do the things the way we do them is all about giving your daughter the best opportunity 
to be able to reach that goal. Um, so then uh, the next piece is why, when should my daughter move up? Uh, this question comes up a lot uh, when trying to determine not only within our system as far as our classifications, but uh, when should you take on another challenge maybe with another tournament series or otherwise? Um, I have a couple of do's and don'ts as far as tournament selection that I'll talk about there at the end. Um, and then we'll have an open forum at the end. But again, if you have any questions along the way, uh, please uh, go ahead and ask it as we go. So uh, let's get started. Ranking systems. Um, kind of six major ones that I kind of point out here just to give you awareness. First, uh, so on the PKB, ours is the uh, performance index. Uh, so that's our ranking system. We use that from all events in the PKB system. So um, the, um, let's see here. So, are you seeing my the ranking systems page? Just want to make sure that that's coming through. Had a note that may, may not be popping up. I'll stop for a second just to make sure. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Sorry about that. Just wanted to make sure. All right. So uh, the performance index there is to rank players within the PKB system. So all tournaments that, that we operate. Um, we also have the um, order of merit, which is our point system. So that's looking at um, how you perform within an individual series. So that's not necessarily a ranking, but um, a point system that's looking at um, how you're doing in comparison to people within a finite group. Um, you will see that system similar within the AJGA's Rolex system. Um, uh, so they have their own ranking system within AJGA called the Rolex rankings, as well as they have their performance-based entry system, which is how you can earn uh, their qualifying system to get access to their tournaments. Um, the National Junior Golf Scoreboard, which is there, is the national system. They have the largest database of tournaments. They rank any multi-day tournament across the country uh, for juniors. So uh, they have the, the largest database there. You're able to see where your daughter ranks against all junior girls golfers in the country that have played in a minimum of five multi-day tournaments. Um, they real nice feature of National Junior Golf Scoreboard is you can search by your grad year. Um, key thing to remember in, in junior golf, even though you're playing tournaments against players of all ages, in reality, if college golf is your ultimate goal, uh, you're competing against players in your grad year because there's going to be a finite amount of scholarships available in that given year. So where you rank in your grad year is kind of going to tell you whether those opportunities are going to be available to you and how much and otherwise. So uh, that's a nice feature that Scoreboard does offer uh, through. Uh, junior, Golf Week Junior Rankings, again, they uh, choose a select number of national events in which they create a ranking system for. Um, I'll, I'll highlight uh, uh, some uh, information from their system to kind of show you where they choose their tournaments and otherwise. Um, but that's uh, another one that's there at the national level for, for higher level national players. Uh, global junior golf rankings is kind of new to the scene. Uh, best way I could describe it is it's junior golf scoreboard, but they're trying to encapsulate and, and bring in weather um, as far as a factor in um, judging what, how, what tournament scores look like. Uh, we all know that all tournament conditions are not created equal, uh, whether it is uh, the weather or the temperature or um, – you know, all the different factors that go into how a course plays on that day. Uh, so they're more of a newer player, but uh, that's their game. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you have the in the Carolinas, for our Carolinas players, the Carolinas Junior Golf Rankings. Uh, they not only rank North and South Carolina separately, but now together. Uh, so players within the Carolinas, uh, there's some could be some potential interest. Um, mainly for them, they have a, an all-state recognition, which is nice, as well as they use their rankings as a way to get into their championship events. Um, and, and speaking from learning about all the different uh, associations across this country, uh, you, the girls in the Carolinas are really blessed to have such a great organization um, that looks after the girls and creates so many opportunities for them. Uh, having as many girls only tournaments as they do is, is not the norm. So. Um, definitely kudos to Jason and all the team at Carolina Journey Golf for everything they do. 
Um, so how are rankings calculated? Um, kind of four factors that, that are looked at. Uh, the majority of your ranking, no matter which platform you're on, is how did you score? Um, then it's where did you finish? What was the tournament worth? And did you win or have a high finish? Those are the four factors that the all the ranking systems look at to try to place you. Um, so the first about how did you score? It's all about scoring differential. This is the thing that they're looking, how they're judging you. So all courses are not created equal. Uh, par 72 is not the same at every golf course. So it's all about the course rating and how you played in that given round. Uh, so the picture I'm showing there is for our upcoming tournament this weekend, the Rocket Tour players at UGA. Uh, so you can see that the par is 72, uh, but your rating is 75.2 for that tournament. Um, so that rating number you're always going to need if you're keeping a candy cap. That's the number they're going to be asking for, as well as that slope, which is immediately to its left, 138. Uh, but 75.2 is what you're being judged as the par for that given day. Uh, so if you're a scratch player, we're thinking you're going to shoot 75.2 uh, at that course setup at 6,000 yards at, at UGA in this coming weekend. Um, so scoring differential becomes the big factor that um, the ranking systems or, or the coaches or otherwise, that's what they're looking at. That's the way they can judge um, no matter what your, what yardage you play, no matter what course you play, that number is real. You know, that, that you, you can't, you know, it, it, it balances out scoring average because scoring average is, that depends on where you play. Scoring differential kind of takes that and makes everything even. Um, so on PKB, you can see kind of for, for Bell, um, our typical course rating, our average course rating is going to be 74.5 prep somewhere around 72.5 and our futures is typically around 70 as far as course difficulty uh, to just to give you an idea how it, how it goes as you move through the progression. Um, the next factor they look at is where did you finish? Uh, so and that can either be determined by who you beat or points earned. A lot of them, a lot of systems will use that. So and that is always going to be reversed to how many players are in the field. So how many players did you beat is what it's looking at. Um, so here, if you're ever on our PKB platform, there's a little uh, on a page you'll see on a, on a scoreboard. If you're at a leaderboard for an event, there's that little um, uh, arrow, kind of squiggly arrow line. And that will show you the points that were earned after an event is completed. Um, so you can see Kimberly Shen was our leader, uh, won the tournament here at Orange Whip last week. Um, and she earned, uh, you know, the more points. Uh, so, for example, on order of merit, that's going to move you up those lists. For our performance index, we use uh, points earned, and the multiplier system that we use is a way to kind of weight different fields um, and, and way that you can move up the list as well. So you're not only getting credit for what you shot, but who you beat. Um, and many of the systems use some version of that. The third uh, piece is what was the tournament worth? And, and this is a piece, you know, strength of field, as you'll see it referred to most of the time. Um, and this, for most of the systems, is based on an average strength of field. So um, how strong each individual player was on average within the field. Some use 50% of the field, some use all the field. There's, there's kind of different metrics depending on the system. But they're all trying to judge how good was the quality of all the players in the field. Um, so. I put a, um, a chart up, and this was from Golf Week's uh, rankings. There's a link there that shows you where it's posted on the web. You can see it yourself. Uh, so this is the most recent events. And these are all the tours in the country right now for girls golf. This is girls specific um, that have at least five events in the Golf Week database. Uh, so these are cherry picking all of the tours top events because, again, Golf Week is selective in what they put in. Uh, but you can see the difference in the way that the different series um, are, are judged as far as strength of field. And again, this can make up anywhere from 10 to 25% of your ranking. Um, so that it does play a factor um, you know, in, in ranking development. Um, I did separate out the AJGA into a couple different factors, uh, just like our tour that kind of has different levels. Uh, the AJGA has different levels of competition. And it's a thing I get asked about a lot. Um, so you have the Invitationals, uh, which are the top events in the country. There are 11 of them, um, you know, the number one ranked advantage you see. Um, these are the top events in the country for girls. 
and they're nationwide. Uh, then the, their open series, the, the IMG events, which are down in South Florida. And then you'll see the PKB is next. Uh, one of the big pieces uh, about Bell National, um, our fields, especially at our championship level, um, is the quality and the strength of those fields has continued to improve year after year. And you're seeing this here compared to the other tours uh, that are out there. Um, and, and this is always a thing I always caution people when you uh, listen to or you see other writings and especially when it's talked about in a co-ed environment, they'll talk about play the national tour. Well, that has a different meaning um, for boys and girls. And you can see from the stats what I'm talking about. Uh, national is a relative term. It, it, it just means where they're running tournaments. It doesn't necessarily mean the strength of the tournament. Um, so, um, with strength of field also multipliers are used a lot by the systems um, and they use it based on historical um, evidence so they're looking back at your last couple years of how good your fields were to kind of determine what the weighting is of your tournament um, i posted here the cga again they they rank our tournaments so our bell event is a five multiplier and then they do half ratings for any of our other fields so Unlike other tours where they only do the uh, longest yardage division, uh, with PKB, they do rank our futures and our prep divisions, if we have them, um, at a different multiplier. Again, creating weight based on what they feel the expected strength of field is. And last, uh, there's something, a win bonus, as you see it uh, marked a lot, um, which is a factor that exists. Um, so you're giving some bonus points for, for winning an event. Uh, so there you can see on Junior Golf Scoreboard, which I'm showing Amanda's, uh, uh, our current tour leader, uh, you know, it's 10% of your ranking is uh, kind of bonuses for top finishes. Um, for PKB, um, we give a, a five-point um, win bonus as well to champions. So you're getting that extra bump. So you can see Kimberly for winning last weekend at Clemson got those extra um, with the multiplier, 13 points for, for winning. <clears throat> so uh, that brings us to now that we know how they're calculating your ranking, does it even matter uh, to your child? Uh, so there's kind of, uh, I kind of separated the thought process into there's three levels. So, cause it really does depend on your level. And these are not absolutes by any means. So I did some ranges and there it is. It's not like if you're 501, then you don't qualify as a national player otherwise. Um, the, the first thing you'll learn when, if you get into the minutia of the formulas is there's a ton of variance. There's a ton of bias uh, for our Northern players. The ranking systems are not built in your favor um, because the Southern players, especially those in the Florida, Texas, California that are near academies, their access to playing against higher level players and higher ranked players is so much higher that it kind of builds a system in and around itself. So they have an inherent advantage to getting access to, to strength of field. Um, so the trying to manage that, you know, there's a piece there. So um, you'll see uh, regional players from the Northern states will kind of be a little lower in the rankings at first because of that. They're just not getting access to the fields of the others. Um, so I'll look at these kind of three different groups of, of players and, and talk about rankings in their respects. So a national player, and I'm going to say a national player, somebody inside the top 500 of junior golf scoreboard or inside around the top 75 on our performance index. Uh, then we'll look at a regional player or someone who's aspiring to be that national player which would be inside the top, you know, let's say 2000 for junior golf scoreboard or inside our top 200 on the performance index. And then for a developing player, so this is a player who's now playing tournament golf um, and they want to play in college. So we may be above 2000 in junior golf scoreboard. Um, we may not even have a ranking yet, which is okay. Um, but he, where are we in the process? Does the ranking matter and, and that? So, so looking at a national player, so national players, does it matter? Well, yes, if you haven't committed to college, it's a nice tool in your ranking, in your recruiting profile to say, I am ranked X, I am number 10 in my class. You know, those things can be separators because it's not just 
you or your parents telling somebody how good you are, but it's putting context to your scores. So a coach is always going to look at your scores first. How do you, you know, what rounds have you shot? Have you gone low? Do they see any 60s numbers on your resume? That's going to impress them first. Um, but then if you can say, hey, here's where I stack up. Here are some tournaments that I've done well in and my ranking is X. That's a nice add-on feature that you can have. Is it an end-all, end-all? I'm ranked below this player, so no way they're going to recruit me? No, that's not the way it's going to work. They're going to look at it in a much broader spectrum. Uh, but it does provide some context uh, to where you are, so it can have some value. Um, rankings also give you, uh, can give you access to certain events. Um, well, I'll talk about priority-based entry for our tour later, which we use the rankings as a, a tool to be able to judge uh, individual players. But there are also other events uh, that use that ranking. Again, I was talking about PBE for AJGA. That's a very key tool uh, to getting access to their tournaments. So if you're trying to, if you're on a national platform, you're a high-ranked player, you're trying to get into those invitationals. Well, then getting, earning those stars is a key factor to getting in and getting exposure to those certain collegiate programs. Um, that's me. Have you commit, if you've committed to college, does rankings matter? No, unless there's a certain tournament you're trying to qualify for or it's just a pride thing. Uh, but at that point, your focus has got to be on how do I get myself best prepared to play? Um, and that should be number one choice you make in determining where you play. You know, yes, you want to be in some really good fields because you want to stay tournament tested. You want to stay tournament tough. Um, but, you know, whether your ranking's 100 or 115, it doesn't it won't matter at that point. Uh, but the biggest factor that's going to determine your ranking at that highest level is strength of field. So tournament selection becomes crucial um, if you're trying to manage your ranking, because um, and, and I'll demonstrate this a little bit later, if you, you know, choosing an, a, other a weaker field could actually hurt you even if you played well. Um, so um, the next grouping, and this is for regional players. So uh, this is that aspiring national player. So maybe you're getting into um, some national events, but uh, you know, you're still developing, you're still kind of in that ranking development phase. Um, so do rankings matter? Uh, yes, from the standpoint of you're going to get you into uh, to more events, so you're trying to accelerate up. Um, and then, yes, as a recruitment tool, but scores at this phase are still paramount to any other factor. So shooting quality scores in the tournament environment is, is number one. Um, and, and like I was speaking to about uh, tournament choices, here's an example uh, of a player uh, it was a 2021 player, and uh, they chose to – this is from – they played in a regional event. Um, so they entered that tournament at 826 in the country, and they won the tournament they played. You'll see their wins went up. They won the tournament, uh, but they played a, a, a local event and won it, and their ranking actually went down 57 spots by winning. Um, so, you know, if you're in this – grouping where uh, you're focusing on, I want to improve my ranking and I need, where you play does matter. Um, I'm not a proponent of saying playing golf is ever a bad idea from a development standpoint, um, but you need to just be aware if, if you're, if you're in, the, in this phase of management and understanding it is there, the choices you make and where you play do affect that. Um, and um, so something just to keep in mind. Um, and I, I guess the one last thing I'll mention on this too, and in this, this particular case, probably what hurt the player the most was that the rank, the, the, the scoring, the, probably the yardage that was played was lower, which meant the scoring differential was lower, which because you can see that the scoring differential went down, went up. So either the scores that they shot were not comparable to all the other scores they had shot, or the course just wasn't set up as hard because it was, uh, a, you know, a lower event, maybe not at a longer yardage. Uh, so those are those factors you want to be looking at um, in determining. And then, you know, for our developing players who are looking towards college, it's do rankings matter? And most of the time, the answer to that is no, uh, because 
rankings are not opening any doors for you at that point. You know, a college coach is not going to be impressed by a player ranked 2,500, you know, yet, you know, and you're not, you're not uh, getting into more events because of that ranking. So a hundred percent of the focus you want at this point is tournament experience, shooting lower scores. How, how do, can my player get more comfortable and can perform better in a situation they're covered. So you don't need to add the added layer and stress and otherwise of where's my ranking? Oh, I moved up 10 spots. It doesn't matter at that point. You know, the only piece you're looking at is development from a scoring perspective. Um, the thing to say is, you know, find value in the choices at this point as far as tournaments. So how close is it to where you live? How much does it cost to participate in the tournament? Not only the tournament, but do you have to pay a membership fee to join another organization? You know, is it worth it? Is, if, if finances are an issue, you know, you want to be, um, you know, choosy in that regard. And the yardage played. Is the yardage played appropriate to where my daughter is at the current time as far as uh, in the developmental process and the scores that she is shooting? All right. Is there any questions before I move on to kind of PKB as far as related to um, rankings or um, the application to um, your daughter specifically? All right. Well, if you have anyone, please feel free to shoot it there in the chat function and then I will uh, be able to answer it. Um, so kind of looking at here is here, how is the PKB structured and why? Um, and, and our pathway, our progression is built on the idea of playing at a yardage and a competition environment that is suited to where you are. Um, we're not proponents of being in the, the back, um, you know, the back of the field um, and just playing. Uh, you know, it's about entering tournaments um, you know, playing to, with expectation as well as just playing. Um, as far as having the slides available, I can have this available afterwards to get this information. I'll be happy to do that. Yes. Um, so ours, it starts with our discovery, our nine hole group, and then works up to our futures, which kind of has two subsections, our one day futures, which is clearly is for our developmental players that are new to tournaments. And then our Futures National Series, which is our competition level Futures. So these are players playing at your high school yardages, 51, 52, 5,300 yards, but playing in a competitive environment. So Futures National events are getting national uh, ranking points. They're being ranked. You're getting that exposure, but you're playing it in a yardage and, and environment that is to where your developmental level. Uh, one of the big reasons why the tour does not have age divisions is we wanted to make sure that players were getting the exposure and the, 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 the necessary environment that they needed to improve versus being jammed into a one size fits all. Well, you're 15, so you have to go back and play with the girl who's been playing since she was seven. Um, the reality is there's a lot of girls that come to junior golf late. They come from T-sports. They may be middle school, early high school. Um, decide that the team sport environment is no longer their cup of tea, but they're very athletic, they are very competitive, and they go, man, I'm going to try golf. And the, the reality is that player gets to college golf the majority of the time. That's what 11 years of doing this has taught us. Uh, so it was creating an environment that that player had a positive environment to then make their progression just the same as the player that may have started when she was eight and had already, you know, was ahead of the game. So we wanted to make sure there was, uh, we were accommodating both of the groups that, that existed and giving them the platform to, to get to college. Um, so that's where ultimately the prep series came in, which is that transition yardage um, for players that were, wanted to get to collegiate yardages, you know, 57, 5,800. So if you play at the division three or the division two level, a lot of tournaments are gonna be competed, uh, contested at that yardage. Um, so that prep series gives you um, the, the yardage that those coaches want to see you shooting scores at. Um, and it's all about, at that point, getting that exposure. And then for the Bell series, which is our highest level of competition, it's, you know, it's preparation for collegiate golf 
all the way up to the highest levels of play. So when we're playing the Invitational at 6250, you know, you're playing at the same yardage as your college tournament at the even the you know the highest levels of golf. Uh, the big thing you're starting to see now is a uh, Division One golf, especially like at the highest Division One at the the national and regional level. I mean, they're pushing 54, uh, 5,500 yards, now, or sorry, 64, 6,500 yards in those tournaments. So length has really become a, a big piece of the game um, that it is necessary. Um, so the priority based entry system and, and why we have it. Um, and, and why it's used along that pathway is it exists to be able to create um, a way for us to be able to create the strongest fields possible at our select championship events and for our select classic events. Um, and, and the big reason for that is we, just like I was talking about rankings and the way that they look at fields, building fields constructing fields from our standpoint, we want to make sure that our players that are on that pathway that may be further along are being given environments that are conducive to their current stature. Um, you know, your player may want to be in that next to that highest level, but, you know, they may not be ready for that level and, and putting them there could have a, you know, a, depending on where they are, they may not have a positive impact on the players that are in that level. So, um, the, the scope of the tour as a whole is looking at creating environments at the different phases that benefit all the players that are engaged. Um, so priority-based entry is a system we use as a way to choose who is selected for any particular event. Uh, the predominant um, events that we use these for are at the Bell National level, specifically at the championship events and our invitationals. Um, and we use a calculation and a formula that's built around not only the PKB performance index and the scoring differential on PKB, because we know what that means. We've been to those tournaments. We set the courses up. We know exactly what those numbers mean to pull for players. Uh, but we also use National Junior Golf Scoreboard and your differential on course Junior Golf Scoreboard as a way to be able to evaluate the, match, the places you've played outside of our platform, because it's not like you've just played with us, and we do get a lot of players coming in that have never played with us. So that is our independent way to be able to bring in additional context into uh, the quality, um, you know, the skill, the skill of that player to be able to judge um, how to make the strongest field possible. You know, and that, again, is what our goal is with this, is to try to maximize that value for the tournament for each of the divisions that are being played um, when we're using our priority-based entry system. So it comes back, the uh, biggest question I, I get asked a lot is when should my daughter move up? Um, and, and the first question I always want to ask is, is it truly about player development that you want to move up? You know, who is pushing the advancement? Is it, you know, your pride in your daughter and, and you know, she's great and I, you know, you should see her swing, you know, like you've got that impact and I completely understand that you are there to be the number one advocate for your child and that's awesome. And our goal is to be advocates for all the girls on the tour and create an, in that environment. So, um, you know, keep that into perspective when, when the decision, uh, you know, is it the player who wants to keep up with the other girls on her high school team because they've maybe moved up and, and she hasn't? Or um, my daughter plays with other those girls on other tours. I get that. You know, I've heard that as, as an explanation. Well, the other tours are age based so that you're being forced into that relationship, you know, that not that it may be the best option for your child. Um, you know, my handicap at my home course, you know, non-tournament environment is, is not a great indication of where your player stands from a competitive level. You know, it's where, you know, what are the results when the lights are turned on? That Those are the things that you want to be evaluating. Uh, and, and then I think there's a miscorrelation uh, a lot of times between how far you hit the driver and the scores you shoot, um, you know, I can move up because I hit my drive a long way. Well, golf isn't, you know, you're not judged by how far you hit it, one. And the, um, you know, scoring is the ultimate piece. So, you know, golf does not get easier when you move back. Now, that is true that distance is a huge factor. So if you play shorter yardages and you're a long hitter, it may require more course management. You know, the Fairways do get narrower as you get closer to the green. So maybe you're not able to hit driver as often. Uh, but 
if the player is not able to create, you know, shoot good scores, um, and, you know, in our qualification, for example, it's breaking 90 at that level from a red T yardage. You know, if you're if you're still unable to shoot 90 um, and or and or a long hitter, then there's still issues in the in the game. You know, in the developmental part that are still there that you you want to look at solving before you create another level of difficulty by making the course play longer. Because the thing you're going to get when you move back is it's not so much that the par fours get they do get longer but the par threes are getting longer you know your your approach shots get longer you know every shot along the way except for putting which doesn't change um get more difficult so you're adding complexity to it maybe where there's already an issue that you want to look at um so you definitely want to take those factor into play so when is it a good time to move up well look at it to you know my scores justify a stiffer test in competition and that stiffer test may be that the course isn't difficult enough or it's not long enough. But your scores are telling you that, okay, I'm performing at a high level at this level. It's time for a bigger challenge. Or my finishes justify a stiffer test. So I am winning all of the events I'm playing at. And this is not just with our tour, but anywhere. You know, I'm winning at this thing. So I need to seek out a higher level of competition. And that doesn't just mean yardage. That may be moving up your tournament series where, um, you know, I need to move to playing uh, um, the USGA National Championships because I'm ready at that. So um, and then my age justifies an acceleration of the progression because I'm running out of time. At, at some point, you know, your juniors and seniors in particular, um, you may need to move back because, you're still committed, you know, you're still out there playing tournament golf at that point and the scores still aren't there. Well, you know, we may need to, it may be time to, to move back and say, okay, we are where we are, but I still have this goal. Uh, one of the most exciting revelations within the last like three to four years is that uh, division three college golf for girls is exploding. The number of programs that are being started is really expanding. So it's creating another opportunity for, for girls to get a collegiate experience, collegiate, you know, student athlete experience. Now you're not getting an athletic scholarship at that level. Uh, you can get academic, um, but you're getting that experience of being a collegiate athlete. So that's adding an additional optional path uh, for players who, um, you know, enjoy golf, enjoy competition. So I'm excited that that's just giving us another layer of an opportunity as you move on. Um, if, you know, division one or division two NAIA scholarship golf doesn't become your uh, your end game. Um, so a couple on the the, the do's and don'ts that, that I talk about as far as choosing tournaments. Um, the first is scores matter most. You know, it's the largest part of your ranking is on that. It's the thing that coaches know to look at. You know, they're just as wise to these systems. They understand how they work. So when you're thinking about moving up and, and if your player's not ready and you move up and you shoot high scores, all you've done is proven to the coach you can't play for her program or his program. You know, you, yes, you may be at the longer yardage, but you, the number's not there. So, you know, why create exact context to, to an issue if it's not there? You know, Scores is what, you know, better scores at a shorter yardage would be better than really, you know, poor scores at a longer yardage. Again, unless your time is, you know, unless you're in that junior senior clock is ticking on you and it's like, okay, it is what it is. Um, but if you're in the process, you, you want to make sure you want that resume to be as strong as possible. Um, the biggest adage I always, we, we believe in is move up to the middle. Um, so when you move up, your expectation should be that your player is going to move into the middle of that field so that their performance is not just going to be move up and you're going to go to the bottom of the field you move into. So their scoring should be prepared to take on that next challenge and get right into the middle of the pack. The thing about the middle of the pack is if you have a great day, that means you moved up and you may be in the top part of the leaderboard. And if you have a poor day, you're going to be at the bottom, but you're getting that different variants where you just don't show up and know I have no chance in this tournament except for to just play two rounds. Um, so that's a thing that you, you should want to consider. Uh, there's definitely a psychological and competitive gain 
to be confident, you know, that player being confident in the surrounding they're in, you know, that's going to give them the confidence to, to perform at their best, you know, versus bringing in other factors um, that, that may not need to be there. Um, and, a, and a big piece that we really believe in is learn to win, learn to compete. And it, it, it's a, a real good model over all these years. I can give you a, lots of examples of players that have chosen this path and it has proven very successful. Um, and it, it's choosing a goal, you know, that playing a tournament where you show up thinking, I'm, I've got a chance to win. If I play well, I could win. That, that mental challenge of, try, of that expectation it creates is a great learning tool to develop a golfer and to develop them into a mentally tough player, which is the ultimate goal to be able to peak perform and to shoot, you know, to, to, to be at your best when you're playing. So creating that environment at a younger age, it's one of the real nice things about U.S. kids and giving their yardage-based system at young ages, but even at the futures level for players that are coming in, you know, having that opportunity to compete, feel that, you know, what it does to your insides when you, you get up there and you, you start, you know, that little bit of panic gets in and you stand over that putt, you know, that piece is, it's irreplaceable. You can't, you can't mimic that in a practice environment, really. You can't do it in a social round. You know, it's got, it's done in competition. So take that opportunity, um, you know, within the the structure, you know, the tournaments you're playing to, to give your daughter that those opportunities before you just move her up into the next level and say, go play. Um, where, you know, you if you're sitting at the back of the field, you know, it's just a different game if you're you're playing in the last group or the first group. Um, and, and um, you know, they just take advantage of, of the opportunity. And for some players, you know, so, it may be setting a goal of I'm going to I'm going to finish in the top 10 of the order of merit for this level. And then I'm going to move up, um, you know, or, or something along those lines. Um, and, and a lot of the things, the reason why our classifications are the way they are. So, for example, our class three allows you to play futures national or at a regional level our futures one day. But when you move up to class two, it gets you access to prep and futures national. So a lot of a good step for players who are futures level players is, okay, at a national level, I'm going to play futures events. So I'm going to compete for my ranking at the futures events. But since one day events are not ranked by the national platforms, they are a great place to get ex experience, get exposure. So I may go play some prep tournaments, play the prep level within the one day system so that I can get exposure, get some development, you know, start preparing my game to move back uh, again within the Carolina system, uh, the CGA one days uh, in the mid Atlantic, the MAPGA has their, uh, their junior events. These are great places for you to get experience and the progression. So if you're going to push the progression, those are the great places to start because you're not walking into the highest level of, you know, a competitive um, ranked environment to try to test out the, the movement. Um, of course, you'll want to play at your home course and start adjusting to the longer yardage. But again, it's different when you tee it up and you, you're competing. Um, so use those environments to, to help you along the process. And when you're at the class one level and you're a bell and prep player, you know, one days are those chances when, you know, you're trying to, you've taken a little time off and you want to get some, uh, you want to get a round in. Again, it's just, they're nice tools um, to just stay sharp whatever, you know, the functionality, whether it's an injury, rehab, you're coming back or you're preparing for a tournament and you're not looking for a huge travel to go play at a big, you know, I'll play this local one day and get that, that, that exposure. Um, so, all right. So that was the prepared uh, pieces I had. So I would love to, to be able to answer any specific questions that, that anybody has um, related to any of the topics that were covered or anything specific to, to your child. So uh, if anybody has a questions, please uh, throw it on the chat there and I will be happy to answer.
All right, so any, uh, do we have any questions? Anybody, anything particularly they'd like to ask? All right, well, I will, um, I'll hang out of here uh, for a little while longer if there's anybody that does want to ask anything. Um, so I really appreciate um, your engagement with us. And oh, here, I have a couple questions. Um, and again, I will say if anybody wants to jump off at this point, if you ever have questions, you're not sure what tournaments may be right for your daughter or you're, you have questions, please reach out. I am a, a resource here with the tour. Again, the tour is here to help you. So please always feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email's mparker at pkbgt.org or call the tour. I'd be happy to answer questions you have. Um, so I'll, I'll answer a couple questions that just came through. Um, so what are your thoughts about playing the different levels of AJGA? Um, so like I showed in that chart, um, you know, the different levels, you know, the, there are different pieces. The, the all-star, the open, the invitationals are, you know, the highest level, you know, really good tournaments. Um, whether you need them or not comes into, you know, the, for, I always say this, if I live in North Carolina and I want to go to the University of Arizona, then you probably want to go play in some high level tournaments out in Arizona so that they can compare you to the local players they're recruiting. Uh, you'll see that a lot on the PKB where we get a lot of players from the Northeast and the Midwest that come to play in our tournaments in the in our region because they want they want the college coaches to see them play. The coaches will say, hey, come play this tournament. I want to see how you play in this environment. Uh, so there's, yes, there can be some value, um, but it's not the end all end all if you, by, you saw by that chart. Um, so, you know, it's picking um, the, the environments that, that may be best uh, for, for what your goals are moving forward. Um, how far back in time is differential calculated? Almost all of the systems are 12 month rolling cycles. Uh, so it would be determined on your last 12 months. Uh, so players that are moving up, it will take you six to 12 months for you to cycle out your, your lower events per se. So if you're a futures player moving to prep, it's going to take you six months to really drop those lower scores and lower rankings and really start to see your ranking move. But what you'll find out is after that, that six to 12 month period, it'll be dramatic how much it does start to move, especially if you can keep your scoring at the level it was or better, which again, that move up, move up, move to the middle concept. If there's not this big drop off in your scoring, when you move up, it's gonna have a positive impact on your ranking because you haven't taken any steps back. Um, moving up as far as how do you request that, um, on our website, you can go to the About Series page, and there is just a simple form that you fill out. We have a resume. Uh, we have a tour committee that reviews all of the resumes. Uh, we've got ex-college coaches that are on that committee, um, and they've been doing it for years for us. So it gives us a nice resource. They have tons of experience being able to place your child in the correct uh, piece. Um, um, how the rankings are calculated. Uh, let me see if I can jump back to it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep, there it was. Oh, I just, too many clicks. Yes, so as far as how your rankings are calculated, and again, it's going to vary by system, but the number one thing is always going to be the what you shoot. It's going to be somewhere between 65 and 80, 85 percent of your ranking is on what you shot during that round. Uh, so there's no there's no magic bullet as far as where you play or otherwise to make your ranking move the more other than shooting good scores. That's going to increase your ranking the quickest is play well. Um, and that is judged again by the scoring differential. So what you shot versus the differential of the course on that given round. Um, every scorecard you get in a junior tournament is going to have that scoring differential on it, or it should. Uh, all of ours will, most of the, you know, anything at the higher levels will. So that's, it's always going to be there. That's what you want to keep track of. All the ranking systems are using that to determine. Uh, the next piece is about strength of finish. So different systems look at strength of finish differently, but the rule of thumb is how many players do you beat 
and who did you beat? That's what they're looking at. Um, the third calculation is what the tournament was worth. So the tournament selection becomes important here because strength of field is a calculation, whether it's 15% of junior golf scoreboard or how the multiplier systems are used on many of the systems. The, and with PBE for AJGA, um, you know, for example, our Mid-Atlantic Girls Tournament coming up is a 12-star 12, 12 event. So it's one of the higher events available across the country for PBE stars. Uh, so that's a great asset if you're trying to, to accrue those. So, uh, you know, what the tournament's value is comes into your ranking as well, because that's looking at who you beat again. It, it's looking. A lot of them, again, those use historical numbers. Some of them use, like, Junior Golf Scoreboard. They uh, historically will look back on a tournament. So if you play in a tournament and five of the girls in that tournament go on to be, you know, within the year go into the top 100, well, they re-rank the tournament, you know, six months ago and say, man, that tournament was really good because those players were in it. Uh, so it does take, again, a 12-month look at the whole broader picture, uh, not just the snapshot of when it occurred. Um, and then last, the win bonus piece, um, you know, you're getting credit for a top finish. Um, so, you know, did you win? You know, you're getting some extra credit for that that's put in there. Um would you equate futures to D3 prep to D2 and Bell to D1? Um, if, if you, that's where you finished, if you were a senior in high school and that's where your, your competitive level was, um, maybe that's a, that's not a, that's a decent analogy. Um, uh, you know, it's, there's no one size fits all. So, you know, I never would say you never would do this if you are here or if you're a Bell player, you're guaranteed to play D1. Um, but um, the, the scoring averages, which is, you know, the metrics that we use along the, the pathway, those are about the scoring averages that you're seeing for recruitable players. So that's, uh, there is something to that. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, a player asking about a player that could play in college but doesn't have a ranking. You know, that a ranking is not going to be the determining factor on whether you play in college or not. Our coach isn't going to say, what's your ranking? Well, if it's not that, I'm not, you're not coming to my school or I'm not ranking you. It's just another tool that they use in the evaluation process. Um, to play in college, you will have to have tournament results. And you want them to be in something, you know, outside of just your high school environment, um, you know, to, to make yourself most attractive to collegiate players. That doesn't mean you need to play 30 tournaments a year. You know, you just need to get some additional context for them to say, okay, she does well in this environment. Okay, she went to a, to a tournament environment because that's what college golf is going to be. It's going to feel more like a junior competitive tournament more than your high school tournament. Even though you have the team dynamic, just the level of scrutiny, the, the expectation that those other pieces are more, uh, you know, apples to apples for them. Uh, so... Um, you know, don't don't fret again. You know, if your daughter doesn't have that ranking immediately, um, you know, it's tournament results will be more important in your resume at this point. So um, hopefully I just covered scoring differential um, in, my, in my recap there. But that's uh, about the difference between what score you shot on the day and the course rating for that round. So par is very rare, you know, the rating is very rarely 72. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're trained to par, but that's not ever really the par for a tournament. A tournament par is always going to be another number. Um, and the example I used, it's going to be 75.1 for those of us joining us in the Bell Division at uh, Rocket Tour this weekend. Uh, what age in high school should I start worrying about the competitiveness of tournaments as opposed to just playing? Um, again, I guess that that would come back to, um, what the goal is. Um, you know, if, if your player is looking to play high level competitive college golf and by high level, I'm saying top 50 programs or top 75 programs, um, you need to be developing a tournament resume by the beginning of high school. If your goal is to play at the elite of the elite institutions, you need to be developing a resume in your middle school years. If you just look at the way the recruiting calendar has accelerated, um, that's where they're looking for talent, um, and, and you want to be able to show that you've met those goals. 
Now, again, there are the majority of the programs, the majority of the scholarships available are not a, are at those schools. That they're a, 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 a portion of the overall, um, you know, piece, and that's uh, you know why we have Brandy Jackson. Uh, I would be remiss not to mention her and what she provides for the tour. She is a resource that we have brought on to help you. Um, you know, that 30 minute free consultation you get with her is by being a member of the tour. Definitely, definitely take advantage of that. She's going to be able to put this kind of conversation in context as of the college recruiting process. So definitely, um, uh, you know, uh, take, keep that in mind. Um, Jason, thank you for the note. Yes. Yeah, so course rating is determining your differential. So uh, the, your, the, the differential is going to be a positive or negative number. So if you shot 72 and the course rating was 75, your differential for that round was negative three. Um, you know, so you'll see the differentials. If you look at the national rankings, negative differentials is what you're seeing from all the top players. Um, so, you know, you're trying to get to that um, point. You know, for us, we use differential like 18 is our differential metric for, okay, it, this is a, may, we may want to start looking, moving back to that prep level. So we adding yardage, you know, I can, to the course rating of 18 shots above it. And 12, 10 to 12 is kind of our metric for Bell. So if, you're, if your course rating is, I mean, your um, scoring differential is somewhere in the 10 to 12 range, okay, you may be ready for the, the Bell level. Um, so um, the um, next prep one days are, are not ranked on the national platforms because they rank um, either 36 or more events. They're ranked on our performance index. We rank all of them. It's also ranked within the Carolinas on the Carolinas ranking system. Um, so the prep one days are ranked in those regards, uh, but not at the national ranking systems. So they are a useful tool in the developmental process from that regard. Um, how to proceed in the next 12 months as far as a player um, looking to play in college, junior in high school, um, doesn't have a ranking. Um, yeah, so this is a piece, you know, you're, depending on the where the scores are, if you're a futures national player right now, um, you, as we get to this summer, you know, it's, it's, we're going to be looking at progressing to the prep division, even if we haven't met that scoring metric yet. Again, that was what I was talking about, is sometimes you have to accelerate the progression because of your grad year. Um, so we may be looking at that. Um, but again, it's we want to just make sure that the player is prepared for the challenge we're putting in front of them, that they're up for that challenge, they're engaged in it, and then, you know, we, we can, uh, you know, adding that additional. Uh, again, at the regional level, especially our summer and fall program is all done with our regional tours. That's going to be a great place to do it because we have those one-day events as well as some multiple two days. Uh, so that would give them a good uh, pathway to kind of to move moving back and starting to be able to buy this coming, you know, next winter even, or this fall, we're starting to post some college yardage scores, you know, so 57 yard, 100 yards and above. Um, is it worth trying one day CGA events at longer yardage if I'm able to in the future? Yeah, again, that one day the one day events are a great place to start testing out. Um, the the Taiga one days are a great place for your player to be able to go and play. Um, you know, they're most of them are playing 56, 5700 yards for the girls. Uh, so that's a great place to start getting that experience. Um, and then, um, you know, I, I would also mention, you know, again, we're really lucky here in this in the Carolinas because we have. Uh, such girls of great girls events, uh, the Vicky DeSantis in May, uh, Twin States and CGA girls in the summer. Uh, so the and NC girls or SC girls. So you've got really good uh, other events. They're very cost effective. They're well run um, and they play the, the yardage. So those are all ranked events that are very valuable to your player in that process. Um, do spring and fall tournaments strengthen your ranking? Um, not by relation to when they are, um, the, the factors more of the, they're more apt from a college coach perspective. That's when they play. So they're more comparative. You know, you just don't play great weather events in college a lot. 
unless you're the Puerto Rico tournament that was just happening for the girls that were just down in Puerto Rico this past weekend. Uh, that was nice. Uh, windy, but really nice. Um, so there's a, there's a piece of that. Um, from a rankings perspective, it, you know, there's a, the winter golf is tough because, do, well, dormant grass a lot of times, as well as uh, ranging conditions. Um, that's why uh, we, uh, the way we set up golf courses um, is a big piece of it, is we're trying to take into account those other factors that make the course play differently than it would on a nice sunny August day. Um, but um, so the, the, the more of the things that you find, you know, what PKB has brought to junior girls golf is that you can find higher level competitive tournaments year round. Whereas in the summer, there's a, just a huge amount of tournaments. You've got great um, national tournaments. You have all the independent tournaments like uh, the, um, you know, the, the Optimist and the PGA Championships and the U.S. Girls. You know, these are the, some really, really good national events that are layered in on top of, uh, you know, your state championship, your state PGA championship. Um, you know, there's just so many offerings in the summer to find quality events. And the problem had been and still exists in many regions across the country is outside of that, there's very limited places for girls to get good fields, to get the quality and the size of fields that are ultimately going to help. Um, and that's what PKB has really um, been a positive in that regard. Uh, so, so that's really what you're picking up is giving yourself a year round platform to be able to develop ranking and not just being having to wait until the summertime to really try to maximize that opportunity. Um, preview events. Um, uh, oops, I think you got cut off what the question was there. Um, let me see if I can get the end. Um, had a question about AJGA preview. Um, Mr. Saunders, it's not giving me the end of your question there. But if we want to talk about um, – yeah, here was the slide that talked about – kind of showed you the different tours that exist. Um, again, it comes about to a resource issue. Um, you know, you can look at that chart and see what the strength of the field is. Um, the preview series are, are, you know, AJGA's way to give more kids access to AJGA. Um, are you getting the AJGA moniker when you say I played a preview event to a college coach? No, uh, but you, you know, you will give yourself an opportunity to earn stars through those events. Um, so, you know, if, if you do perform well in them, um, it, you could use it as a springboard to higher level events. Um, the question is, is that where she is? If she gets more stars, is she going to be able to get into an AJGA field, which only offers 24 girl spots? So they're very limited in the opportunity that exists. And if she gets into that field, is she going to be able to perform at a level that made it worth the time and effort and financial and otherwise to be able to do it? Um, so those are the things I would argue. Uh, you know, again, I'm not going to say you should never play any other tournaments. I just think you want to look at it and say, is it worth the resource allocation that it, it is in play to go do it? Um, being that you have, um, you know, with our series or others that may be available, um, you know, additional opportunities that may be more cost effective or provide you the same opportunity. Uh, so uh, just just you know keep it in that context, and um, you know then you can make the best decisions for what's right for your child. Um, but at the national level, when you're looking at invitationals and opens, um, you know from a coach's perspective, you know like same with our invitational or, or you know any of our biggest events, getting into performing well against a high level field is always going to be looked upon very favorably. Um, you know, and at some point, if you're you know if you're again, about that moving up, you know, if you're outperforming the field you're in, so if you're always showing up to an event and you're the best player, well, it may be time to find the next challenge. So, um, um, so next question is, is, is there concern about going back and then playing poorly? Um, 
you know, you're going to have to choose some opportunities to move back. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of picking your spots. Uh, I am, I am not, you know, I just did a presentation on rankings, but now I'm not a huge, it's all about rankings guys. I think it's all about scores. Um, so, you know, and, uh, forgive me for not knowing Bethany's uh, graduation year. Um, but you know, if, if you're not a hundred percent focused right now on, um, you know, managing the ranking, which I don't think you would be for her at this point, then, you know, a couple of experimental events and using the CGAs to do that's not a bad, not a, you know, a bad thing. It's not like you're going to, um, you know, it's not going to be catastrophic because it's a 12, again, it's a 12 month cycle. So if, uh, you know, she's a, let's say she's a freshman and her recruitable, um, the expectation is her recruitable years are going to be um, the end of her sophomore and the beginning of her junior, you know, all through her junior year, that's going to be, you know, she's going to be on the norm, you know, that normal college track, not the accelerated one for the, you know, the high, high level programs. Well, you've got 12 months to lose that score. So um, even if she plays poorly, it, it only hangs, you know, by the time she's a sophomore summer, it's gone. So, okay. It's not, is it, it's not going to hurt um, per se that much. Um, but you know, again, it's making sure you put your player in a position where they're they're prepared for the challenge that's being put in front of them, and that they're you know they're getting that that value out of that um, you know that event. Um, so that's what I'd say for that. All right, any last questions? Well, great. Well, hey, I appreciate everybody being a part of this tonight. Again, if you have questions, please reach out to the tour. Again, mparker at pkbgt.org. Happy to assist any way I can. Um, uh, yes, uh, that last question comes through. Uh, junior golf scoreboard's 12-month rolling as well. Pretty much all the systems are going to be on a 12-month roll. So uh, thank you all. Have a great night. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all, whoever's coming out to Athens this weekend or, or down the road at our next event. Uh, contact inf information, again, our tour's phone number is 336-347-8537, or my email is my, uh, M, as in Mike Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R, -E at pkbgt.org. All right, folks, have a good evening.